joined today by Dr. Dan Lucchini from Adiseo. Welcome to the program, Dan. Thank you. Dan, tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been with the company and your background in ruminant nutrition. Sure. I got my PhD degree from the University of Wisconsin in Madison in Dairy Science. That was oh, about 15 years ago. Since then, I have been working in the uh, industry, not only in the U.S., but also involved in worldwide uh, projects. I joined Adiseo about five years ago, and my title is Manager of Technical Services for Ruminant Products. We wanted to talk today a little bit about amino acid balancing. Really, this practice has become a best practice among nutritionists. Why is that? Well, first of all, we need to understand that basic knowledge of the benefits obtained when diets are balanced for amino acids had been known for the last 40 to 50 years. Having said that, the the day-to-day practice uh, had not been easy due to the uh, complexity that is involved in designing a diet for amino acid balanced rations. What happened in the last 10 to 15 years is the ease of use of software programs on a day-to-day basis, on a a farm basis. That's one of the reasons why this practice is being put into into practice on a day-to-day basis. But also, we know that lysine and methionine had been the most limiting amino acids for the diets in North America. We have been having commercial available rumen protected methionine sources for the last 20 years or so, but we have not had access to a commercial rumen protected lysine product. That happened only in the last couple of years. Well, with access to these two limiting amino acids, now applying the concept of amino acid nutrition became a lot more easy. Essentially, the producers are understanding and can realize with doing that, you are actually making a much more efficient use of the nitrogen of the diet. And by that, I mean you can lower the crude protein of the diet, you can reduce the nitrogen excretion, and save some money in the process. So, Dr. Lucchini, what happens when lysine and methionine are balanced properly in the proper ratio in a ration? We have uh, essentially two ways of looking at this. One is what I call the short-term effect. And by that, I mean what the cow express on within a couple of weeks after they are in the program. That is expressed in higher milk volume and higher components. And these short-term effects have been what the industry had been focused on and promoting to the producers to use the amino acids. Now, what I think the most rewarding impact is the long-term effect. And that are expressed in terms of better health and reproduction of the cow. Those effects are much harder to see on a day-to-day basis just because of the number of cows that it takes to actually be able to realize that the cows are getting healthier and you're having better reproduction within your own herd. Now, the combination of those two effects, the short-term effects, that is to say higher milk volume and composition and better health and reproduction, they do have an extremely attractive financial payoff for the producer. One of the reasons why I was most interested in speaking with you is to talk about the best ratio for lysine and methionine as those two sources of amino acids have become more targeted. Producers don't have as much fudge room in what they're feeding. What have we learned about the best ratio of lysine to methionine? We need first to to recognize that in the U.S., there are essentially three basic ration software programs used on a day-to-day basis, and those are based on the NRC or the program developed by the National Research Council. The second one is the CPM or the program developed by Cornell, Penn, and the Miner Institute, and the third one is called the CNCPS which is the Cornell Net Carbohydrate Protein System. Each one of these models has its own biology, 
and each has its own optimal ratio of lysine and methionine. That optimal ratio is between 285 and 295. And the important point out of this is that in order to maximize the efficiency of utilization of those amino acids, you need to aim at different lysine and methionine ratio depending on the model that you're using. Dr. Lucchini, what do you see on dairy rations that you evaluate from dairies today? What is their ratio like? Too high, too low? Where does that usually fall? Uh, that's a good question, and, and independent of the model that you are using or the nutritionists are using, and independently of the area of the country that they are working on, that lysine to methionine ratio 99% of the times comes high. By high, I mean that they are over 3. Usually, they are 3-3 three, three to 3-6 three, to 1. And what would that mean if, you're, if your lysine methionine ratio is too high? What are you going to be missing out on, even if you were trying to do amino acid balancing? Well, what happens is that, that if you have that wrong ratio, the cow is making an inefficient use, and in this case would be of lysine. Grams of lysine per day are expensive nutrients. So you're not taking full advantage of what you are offering to the cow by not providing the right grams of methionine and bringing that ratio to the right balance. When you do that, the cow rewards you by having a better meal production and composition. And by saying when you fix that is when you bring that lysine to methionine ratio to the, to the right balance. And even if you understand the theoretical concept of amino acid balancing, but you're using the wrong numbers, what would that do to your actual ration fed to the dairy cow? That's a good question because there are several amino acids beyond lysine and methionine that are essential to the cow. Now, we do focus in lysine and methionine uh, because they are recognized that they are the first limiting amino acids in the dairy rations in North America. That is to say that if they are not fed in the proper ratio, the cow is not going to make 100% use of one or the other. So that's one of the points, ratio. The other point is that they are not provided in the right amount. That is to say, the right grams fed per cow per day. They are going to limit the cow's production. Let's put this in another way. If you are breeding a cow every day to have a better genetic potential of that cow, if you don't then don't take the extra step and feed them the right grams of lysine and methionine that the cow needs to express that genetic potential in terms of milk volume, milk composition, better health, better reproduction. You are going to waste all the efforts that you invested to have that really nice cow ready to express her genetic potential. So to quickly recap, if a dairy does correct their ratio and get it in line with what you've suggested here today, what can they expect? The, the beauty of this is that once you do it and you do it for long enough, you're going to have a very consistent uh, and higher production and, and, and a consistent efficiency of nitrogen utilization. And again, I've said that before, the cow is going to reward you because she is going to express her genetic potential, you're going to have a healthier herd, and overall, you're going to have a better cow performance. Thank you for bringing these important points about ration balancing, specifically amino acid balancing and the appropriate lysine to methionine ratio to the program today. I appreciate your commentary. Thank you much for giving me the opportunity.